Welcome back in. It is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Tyler Head, Wes Mitchell, and Chris Clark along with you on this Friday morning. Rainy Friday, by the way. That rain finally did show up, Dave. Uh, didn't see that on my weather forecast this morning. But regardless, Tyler, raining told right me yesterday now, it wasn't going to rain today. I would. I mean, the iPhone app told me it wouldn't. It's never steals, it never steers me wrong. It did. It did today. I'll be more weary right. next time. You, you can be um, a weatherman still. Yeah, they, well. They don't have to get it right. Well, I got a friend that's a weatherman. He would probably be offended by you saying that. Um, regardless, I think the weather's supposed to clear out by the time first pitch rolls now tonight between South Carolina and Arkansas. It's supposed to be a nice day tomorrow. Maybe it'll rain. I don't know. But should be nice weather for tomorrow night's uh, spring game, which, again, we've been talking about all week long. Finally, almost here to uh, get our first full glimpse of this team. Um, as you guys have been out there at practice a few times so, so far through spring, getting to see a few reps and a few drills. But uh, the full scope of things going to be on display coming up tomorrow night. Uh, this being now the what fourth spring of Shane Beamer as the head coach. Um, as far as the the feel and vibe around this game, how does it compare to years past from y'all's perspective? It's a good question, Tyler. I, I do feel like, um, well, let's break it down. The the first one, there's obviously a, an excitement level because it's a n- completely new staff and there's just so much new to see, right? Like it, it, everything is new at that point. And you want to get a feel for, hey, does this team have a chance to be pretty good this year? I would say year two, you're wanting to get your first look at uh, Spencer Rattler, right? So, I uh, that that one maybe had the most buzz and excitement. I, I feel like in every coaching tenure, by the time you start to get to three, four, you know, five, you're kind. Of, it becomes a little bit more down to business. I, I think. Like I, I think fans are excited to to go see this team. I think they're excited to see Lenoris. I think they're excited to maybe see some of these wide receivers, but. But for the most part, I, I think it's kind of your your standard spring game. Now, they'll, they'll need to have a good crowd, which they will because uh, they, they always do. Gamecock fans always show up. And the uh, the list of recruits that are going to be here is insane. So I, I think in terms of that, it, it'll, be, it'll be a good, solid crowd. But if you're going to compare them, I think seeing Rattler the first time is probably the one I would give the edge. Yeah, I think so too. And I think you look back to some degree you always look back on the on the last season. So, you know, after 2022, you know, Carolina had just come off beating Tennessee and Clemson back to back. They did lose the bowl game, right? But people kind of almost unbelievably were able to put that into context a little bit, right? Because yeah. you're missing so many people from the team. And it was a competitive game. It was I a mean, competitive it was game. 7 point game at the end. It was end a of great it. game. It was yeah, a great game. Super entertaining game. So, People look back to so, say, well, obviously, you know, the roster in some spots was kind of decimated because of transfers or bolt, you know, opt outs and things like that. And then you had that excitement. You also had Rattler coming back, like you, like you said, Wes. So people were kind of looking forward to, okay, you know, what's going to be, you know, a little bit different this time around. Um, you also had a new offense. You know, there, there was a lot of talk about what is the offense going to look like, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, th- the reality is you didn't have that type of finish to last season, but you do have some new pieces. I think that the quarterback always draws the most intrigue. And so you do have that newness there because you have a guy in Lenora Sellers that fans have gotten a little bit of a of a taste there. They've seen some of the plays. They knew what he did in high school. They've heard about the talent. Most of them have seen some little, like I said, little glimpses of it. And so that's the thing that I think people are probably excited about. And some fans take the approach of, hey, even though last year didn't go how anyone wanted, you know, there, there's some hope there. We brought in some new guys. These guys are back. And so there's some intrigue there. But I'll, I'll be very interested to see what that crowd does end up looking like tomorrow night. And that's something that I've talked about all morning myself, talked about with intern Joe in the last hour. As a fan base, you're just wanting optimism coming away from this. Now, are you going to get every answer to every question solved tomorrow night? You're not. We're not going to find out who the starting quarterback is based on tomorrow night's performance. That's something that's going to continue as we go through the summer and maybe even into fall camp as well. You just want that optimism as you head into what is a quieter period when it comes to football because they're going to take the month of May off. They're going to have summer workouts, obviously fall camp coming up in August. But as far as like, 
you know, seeing the team itself, you're not going to really see them again until they play that game in uh, August against Old Dominion. So you just want an overall good feeling coming away from this, getting to see those new guys, getting to see whichever quarterback that ends up being going out there and performing well, and, um, you know, just creating an overall good vibe as you head into the summer. Yeah, and I think it, you also you add to the fact that these days – you don't get those opportunities to, to go see an open practice. And, you know, I, I think for for much of the Spurrier era, you know, it was kind of um, – the, the spring game was, was obviously a little bit bigger look and it was in the stadium. But if you wanted to go out there and literally just watch practice, you could just walk out there and watch. So you could go get a taste of everything. These days for – you know, we, we get our, our little media periods out there, but um, – you know, for for most for every fan, basically, unless you're a major donor, then this is your one look at the team, and uh, you know, e- even for us as well, it's it's one of our it's the the biggest, longest, most in depth look at the team as well. So I, I think for for that alone, you're you're kind of um, interested to see, and I I would say, I guess Clayton White talked about it yesterday. You're trying to build depth. You're trying to get. Uh, you're, you're going to let Debo go run around and get his, you know, a couple of drives in, three drives in, I don't know, a quarter. But this is really about letting those young guys go out there and play in front of a crowd, play in front of the, the lights or under the lights, and uh, it's an opportunity for them. And uh, I thought I thought Clayton had some good stuff yesterday. He said it's basically like when you're taking the SATs, you, you, you've done your SAT prep. Yep. And in practice – that's like SAT prep, and and you you know a coach can be yelling at you, at right up to a play being snapped. Hey, you know you're in the wrong position. This, there there is no, there is no, hey man, you're watching the wrong cue. You're you're in the wrong spot pre snap. This is go out and show what you've learned. Yeah, it's it's a great point, and you see that a lot during spring ball. You know some of the windows that we have been able to see of what three or four practices you see that a ton when guys are out there hey so and so you know move up you know wrong gap blah 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 you know line up this way line up that way and so these scrimmage situations are so important and you know this is that final scrimmage you know those are the when when the coaches have the headsets on and there's plays being called and you're out there live tackling and things like that, that's, that's going to be, again, we've talked about this all week, that's going to be your best approximation of an actual game setting because you're splitting up the teams. You're going to get, yes, it's still against your team. There's familiarity. You'd much, everybody would rather play another team to see how you truly stack up. Uh, but this gives you, you know, a better sense of what you got exiting the spring. Although, you know, I think it's important to remember too, this is not a finished product. This is not preseason camp. They're not playing Old Dominion next week. You know, this is just spring. And I think we've seen um, and heard some strides from some guys. Are there still questions? Absolutely. I, I think when we get past preseason camp and they're about to go play Old Dominion, I, th- I think we'll still have some questions about this team. They're not going to have everything solved. But this will be another good look and, and kind of give us a better sense of where things are. And uh, are they drafting teams tonight? Or is they that, had it last night. They had it last night. We don't know the roster we don't, pickup just yet. We don't. Uh, we don't. We don't know who the number one pick was either, do we? It was Sellers last year. It was right? Sellers last year. He he probably was number one pick again, right? Yeah, I, I would think. But, but Beamer contextualized that a little bit talking about it the other day because. You know, Sellers was number one, but there was, and, and, you know, deservedly so, but there was also some strategy because it's like people knew Spencer was only going to play one quarter right. you know, in that game. So Sellers was going to get a lot more run. Now in this game, given where the situation is, Sellers ain't going to play one quarter. Uh, we'll see. I think we'll see a good bit of him. So that, that so makes he, me think. I mean, he probably, he had to be the number one pick, I was think. thinking, yeah. I mean, I, what, you're probably splitting it up. Well, between two teams, I mean, you let Robbie and uh, Lenoris each play like a half, I guess, on either side, and then let it Reno on and it. Bevel maybe he'll handle the second half on either team. Because, again, you are wanting to see as much of these quarterbacks as you can. I feel like giving them all a fair balance of snaps would probably be the best way to go, right? Yeah, I, I would think, and I, this is complete speculation, but I, I would think – they're gonna let those guys go, kind of like you said, go go maybe play a, a full half each, and then 
I would think, second half. Now, sometimes, you know, you may see them say, hey, we'll, we'll give you a drive in, in the third quarter as well. Just, it just depends on what they're trying to get out of it. And obviously, these are valuable reps for everybody in that quarterback room. So it's not like where you have Spencer and he comes back and he's a veteran and you're just like, hey, man, go go get your throws and then we're going to get you out. We're not going to let you get hurt. So I, I think for them, we'll, we'll see how, how that plays out. But, but certainly Sellers and Ashford are going to get a ton of reps. And the second half is more – that's a lot of your third teamers sure. for, you know, walk on stuff like that. So in the last hour I asked intern Joe, you know, who is most interested to see in the spring game tomorrow night. And he actually brought up Dante Reno. I thought that was an interesting point. Cause when I go back to last year, Lenore Sellers coming in as a true freshman, we knew Spencer Rattler, it was his job. Lenore Sellers went out there and showed out pretty well in the spring game was a part of helping his team win at the end of it, you know, w- without the, the pressure of knowing he was competing for the starting job. And yes, it's technically an open competition. Dante Reno is technically in the mix, but again, we're, we're kind of looking more towards Sellers and Ashford as being the two guys it's coming down to. So uh, Dante Reno has an opportunity to go out there and show what he's got and, you know, have that conversation for maybe next spring when that comes around that he could be in the mix for that certainly but you know I'd say the pressure is maybe off him a little bit more compared to the other guys yeah I don't think there's much pressure on Dante at all right now to me it's about just getting out there and and learning and and then learning from mistakes and kind of uh just getting as many positive reps as you can do we see Luke Doty get some reps at quarterback you know that that's another thing there where I, I think you probably will see Luke get a get a drive or two at, at QB so you know that there is going to be there, there's only so many drives so uh, i think they're, they're gonna have to divide it up pretty well uh, among all these guys but they'll, they'll all get reps and um it, it'll be it'll be interesting i mean you, you can't you can't really take a depth chart from it either because they're split up yeah so it's like it's almost like the starters are on kind of the one or two at the depth chart but then after that well okay does that mean the next guys are three and four? Right. And but also there was a draft, so well the the only exception sounds like being the offensive line because they didn't want to kind of try and keep those units as cohesive as possible. Yeah, if, if they can. So um, there'll still be a little mix and match though. I would think. I think, but because and and you can you can still do that because there's not there's not a starting five that's like set. There's still not a depth chart, Chris? Is that what you're saying? There's no depth chart. You know what I want to know is I want to know uh, which one player you guys are looking forward to seeing the most. Okay. We can do that when we come back. We can. That sounds like a perfect segue. Look I at was Chris, trying to do look at Chris tease. teasing things. Yeah, I was trying, and y'all didn't, you know. No, I, I was here, then Tyler pointed at me, so <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was with you. <laughs> we'll hit that coming up. We'll also hear from what uh, Coach Loggins and what Coach White had to say to the media yesterday as well. Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on this Friday here on The Game. All right, guys, almost lunchtime, which means it's time to order your Firehouse Subs for today. Firehousesubs.com or download the Firehouse Subs app in the App Store. Hit that rapid rescue to go. Avoid the wait and order with either of those great options. And speaking of options, you got so many options for whatever sandwich you may want. And uh, let me tell you about this new barbecue Cuban Southern Roots cuban twist i'm looking forward to being out at firehouse subs here very very soon we're going to give you that information and uh, and trying this thing but again it's a southern roots cuban twist if you want to try my favorite get out there and try that brisket sandwich add bacon it is phenomenal again if you do the rapid rescue they're going to put everything in the bag including your chips they're going to have it waiting for you right there on the shelf when you walk in it's by far the easiest most efficient way and you get points for every single order FirehouseSubs.com or the Firehouse Subs app. Order right now.
Welcome back in Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs, Tyler Head, Wes Mitchell, and Chris Clark along with you. We'll have full coverage for you of the spring game coming up tomorrow night here on the game immediately following Carolina baseball. We'll jump right in the pregame, and then the game starts. I say kickoff. There's not going to be a kickoff. Game starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, Chris Miller going to be on the call for play-by-play. Terry there, Ford. there could be a kickoff, Tyler. There, oh, there could be a kickoff. Okay, most spring don't, games don't have kickoffs. I don't think he returned. Don't, don't well, they do the... It's it's yeah. a it's like a formal thing. Let, let let and let's go ahead. Let's can we do a PSA? You can yeah. do whatever you want. All right, y'all, your show. y'all. So if there is a kickoff, and a player catches the kickoff and begins to run said kickoff, he will be he will run far, like he'll get past the fifty. It is not going to be a touchdown in the game. So, I mean, you can cheer if you want for the effort. But it will not be a touchdown. PSA: see, they they don't they don't uh, typically go live. If you see uh, people trying really hard and stuff like that, I then think okay. it should be like an Oklahoma drill, where guy uh, you whoever's kicking it off kicks the returner, and then he has to stop him from scoring the touchdown. One on one, like using the whole field. Using the whole field, Th- he has no chance. Zero. Fourth shot. One on one. One on one. No. No. Chris, Chris just we're, destroyed we're, your we're, idea. We're trying to make the spring game fun here, Chris. Sorry, uh, Alex Herrera and Joyce and all you hey, guys. Man, some of these kickers Even can, Kai Kroger. Some of these kickers can lay the wood, man. You never know. And I think that would be Not a perfect opportunity to see him try it. You have to – he has to have, like <laughs> – his other 10 teammates at least force the guy to a sideline or okay, something. Well, Chris, Chris is just killing my dreams this morning. Unless so, you are – kill. Unless you're our guy, uh, Mitch Jeter, now at Notre Dame, one-on-one tackles. Force and fumbles, things See, like that. That's the thing you, you never know until they get out there and do it. Yeah, I think I, I think an Oklahoma kickoff drill would be perfect. But I got I got to sway off. Chris doesn't but, like but, to have fun. But but nonetheless, well, it, yeah, that was kind of a buzzkill, wasn't it? Like, well, if you right, were, let, we're trying to entertain the people here, Chris. <laughs> let's let's move it back. Okay. Tracks are over here, Chris. Right. You you even teased, <laughs> you even set up what we're talking about. Yeah. But Tyler mentioned the kickoffs that got me all off kilter. But yeah, so so what we're gonna do? Let's pay it this off. This is a train wreck it's okay let's pay let's pay it off one player that you're looking forward to seeing the most in the spring game i want tyler to go first yeah. i'll go first i'll go with demetrius knight oh okay i I've, did not I, anticipate tyler's that. thought about this yeah. i think i've uh been very intrigued by the tape that i saw obviously played at georgia tech went over to, to unc charlotte mm-hmm. all ac all aac guy a season ago all over the field seems to be that sideline to sideline type of guy i'm interested to see what he's going to be able to do it's a good one it's a great one. Uh, so we're going to enact the you can't say Lenora Sellers rule, which Good. is a graduate from the you can't say Spencer Rattler rule. And um, basically that's like the obvious. Every I think if you polled the fans on Twitter, 80% would probably say Lenora Sellers. So yeah. Lenora Sellers would be my answer. But you can't say Lenora Sellers. I'm going, I'm going Jared Brown. Good one. Because I'm intrigued um, because I feel like we, we've we heard a little bit more about Gage Larverdane, and we've obviously heard quite a bit about Mazio Bennett. But then the fact that in both scrimmages, Jared Brown got a mention. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, you know, and Beamer has talked about, hey, some guys are gamers. Some guys take it to another level when the lights are on. Some guys play a little bit better when there's fans in the stands. I'm I'm just I'm interested to see what Jared Brown does, and looking at what he did at Coastal, this guy's definitely a playmaker. So I, I think against what are probably some base defenses here and there, I, I think this could be a chance for for him to make some plays. Yeah, it, this one this year it's really hard, especially in the transfer portal era. You know, as many guys as South Carolina has brought in from the portal and some impact freshmen potentially, I would say. It's hard to narrow it down to just one guy. Um, I'm going to say Dylan Stewart because, you know, he's been a guy that the past two scrimmages over the last couple weekends, we've heard just universally both of those weekends, like he looks really good again. And so I want to get a look at him in that scrimmage setting when he's going to be allowed to rush the passer and, show his movement abilities um he's one i'd pick out my my backup would be gage larvadan 
like I'm with you on Jared Brown as well, but Gage is a guy that I think he he started making some noise pretty much as soon as he got here as well. So and receivers obviously one of those question mark positions, but but um, Dylan Stewart just because of how much we've heard as of late. You got a backup, Tyler? Uh, I I do, and I think it's interesting that you guys bring up two receivers there in um you know what what you were mentioning because one guy that we haven't heard a whole lot about I feel like through the spring so far is Amari Huggins uh Bruce transferring over from Louisville and, and again that was a guy that they came in with Larvardain came in with Jared Brown all kind of similar type of play mm-hmm. styles but but he's somebody that hasn't been discussed as much from what you guys have seen at practice and as well as coaches talking about the receiver position and their you know media availabilities and I, I don't know what the reason for that would be but is he that far behind these other guys he's not being looked at as a potential starter like wh- what what does he bring to the table and, and how does he potentially perform tomorrow night I think would be intriguing to see yeah and I um I don't want to speculate but I'm wondering if he could be one of those guys that's been a little bit dinged up at times because I think otherwise we would have definitely heard something about him because he, he clearly is in the conversation to be in that a starter and definitely I would think in that rotation this year obviously depending on who comes in and who else they add from the portal during this next or during this current window so I I think that's uh, I think it's a good question Tyler and we'll see what he can do tomorrow well and I will say since this is in the public domain the the last scrimmage a, a week from tomorrow so Saturday on the 13th yeah um AHB was not dressed out for that via a public domain picture from Mike Fury on Twitter oh, at the wide receiver group. So I think what, what you're saying is is yeah is on point. You know? Banged up, dinged up. Hopefully hopefully you can play tomorrow and, yeah. and go do some things. My backup, Jawarn Howell. Mm, like that one too. Because I I continue to think obviously we kinda we know or think we know what Rocket's going to be, especially if he can get back to what he was, you know, two seasons ago. And then I think Attaway, it, it'd be fun to see him, but I, I just think the young guy, still a little bit raw, but lots of upside, was phenomenal at SC State. It was obvious that, um, you know, he could play at the SEC or ACC level. And he, he's got, obviously, some some years of eligibility ahead of ahead of him so there's going to potentially be some time for him to to grow and get better but i just can't shake the feeling that there's always guys banged up at running back that always happens throughout the course of a long sec season howell may not be on your two deep day one of the season but i think at some point this season they are going to have to rely on this kid and i I think he's going to be ready from what i've heard but i'm interested to see him out there in a full-blown scrimmage setting with tackling and um, that that step up from the level he was at to here, how how does his running style, how does his skill set translate to that? I, I think will be fun to see. And I, I don't want to do that thing where we like we did name our one player, so I don't want to do that thing. Well, let's just name everybody. No, that's what mm-hmm. he's about to do. The whole, but, the whole roster. <laughs> but no, I'm not gonna name the whole roster. But I I kind of feel the same about Braswell, you know. He's he's gotten a little bit lost in the shuffle at times because you've got the you got the shiny new object. The, the new toy syndrome. Yeah, the new toys. You got you know ever you know Rocket is on the shelf right now, but we knew that. But you okay, Jorn Howell, okay, Oscar Attaway, but but Braswell's still in there too. He's still one of the fastest guys on the team, and he played a little bit last year and and did some good things. So, um, I fi- I figure he as long as he's healthy going into this game will probably get an ample amount of opportunities as well and he's still a younger guy like Howell he's right. a younger guy Oscar Attaway's played a ton of football in in college sure. not in the system sure but interested to see Braswell too and obviously you'd love for Rocket Sanders to be healthy right now where he could go out there and you know play tomorrow night but but we know what we have in him when he gets back to full health given the fact that he's proven it in the SEC already but but him not being able to to go out there and get reps right now that opens the door for more reps for Braswell for more reps for Jerron Howe and Oscar Attaway as well who again is taking a step up in competition level going from playing at North Texas to playing at South Carolina so so you know again you hate to see somebody still be injured but it does provide a benefit on the back end of these other guys being able to split those reps that he would have been getting through the spring yeah you know when rocket spoke earlier this week he seemed genuinely 
I would say, to feel pretty good about his progress. Like, kind, kind of basically said he was ahead of where he thought he was going to be, which I, I thought was a, a phenomenal sign. Didn't really sound like just almost like coach speak. It sounded kind of, you know, generally like he was a little bit surprised at how far along he was, which is, is great for them. But I, I'll be curious to see tomorrow – does Attaway get put into the all oh, this guy's played so much category? We're going to get him two drives, and then it's going to be the other guys. I, I think it sets up, particularly in that kind of middle, just bulk of the game section. So before we've turned into fourth quarter, let, let's get the walk on some some run category. Who Who's out there the most? That That's where I think it sets up for probably – Chris is guy, DJ, and for Jawarn to get out there and just carry the rock a ton. So uh, I think th- those that's to me what you're looking for if you're trying to like predict a spring game MVP is the guys that are high enough on the depth chart that they are going to be like out there when the t- other top guys are out there but are young enough and not quite established enough that they're going to get to play a lot. We'll hear from the coordinators what they had to say to the media yesterday ahead of tomorrow's spring game. Coming up as the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs rolls along on your Friday here on the game.
Oh. Welcome back in. It is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Tyrod West Mitchell and Chris Clark along with you. Appreciate everybody checking us out on the Game TV sponsored by Shepherd's Glass and powered by our friends over at Integrated Media. Also tuning in on the 107.5 The Game app. Just head to the iTunes store, the Google Play store. Give it a download and take us with you wherever you go. Of course, spring game tomorrow night. Biggest question uh, this entire offseason has revolved around the quarterbacks and who the starter will be when the season starts on August 31st taking on Old Dominion. We'll start off cut number one here, Dave. Dow Loggins yesterday kind of giving a timeline for when exactly they could be naming the starter for the team. Really good question, and we could probably spend 30 minutes on it. There's advantages to both. Um, you know, we've had 13 practices, so guys have had good days, bad days, continual growth. Um, you're going to have that. The advantage of doing it is if you did it early, well, then everyone knows who it is. Um, it's also you still got a whole training camp in summer, so – what happens if, you know, one of these young kids are all of a sudden the new guy, you know, ha is a little bit better because he's been through it all, and the second time executing it, he's better at it. So, you know, you, you evaluate everything. We've had 13 practices. Obviously, we're not ready to do that right now. Um, we're semi-pleased. We're with everyone's at, but there's a long way to go with all of that. The disadvantage is this. <clears throat> Most of the time, the locker room knows who the best guy is but based on practice anyway or they have a their own feelings of that um, and to be honest most time the locker room knows before the coaches know um, because it is their team the good teams are led by the locker room and um, the disadvantage to not naming a guy is there's still five quarterbacks out there and it's like hey who do we follow who do we lead and it's the mentality of do your job like do your job like that keep the main thing the main thing and worry about the things you can control and same with those guys so we're not there yet we've had 13 practices we have two left um, so at some point coach Beamer and myself and other and the rest of the office staff will sit down and talk about this and I understand people dying to want to know who's going to be taking the snaps when the season rolls around and you know regardless of what happens tomorrow night uh, I brought this up earlier if Sellers goes out there and throws six touchdowns or Robbie Ashford throws six picks then that doesn't necessarily decide things it's uh, some of what happened over the course of the entire spring and again you guys only got to see very limited uh, amount of reps um, you know in your media availability so there's a lot of things that have happened behind closed doors that we don't know about with this quarterback battle that uh, is going to take more time to ultimately decide who the starter will be they don't really seem to be in a huge rush um, either. And I, I think some of that is, you know, I, I think if it was one of those things where if you had just like a, a veteran guy and, and may, maybe he wasn't the starter last year, but he was like a junior or senior and everybody else were freshmen and sophomores and it was just kind of your traditional, this is how things used to be. And it would be like, one guy waits his turn, and he's kind of trying to work his way up to being the guy. You might see them go ahead and just say, hey, the end of spring, this guy's our starter. Like, I think the end of a spring game press conference would be a great time to announce a starter because then you go into the season, the locker room, and, th and that was a great point too, the players know, or the players have their favorites, I, I think. So um, if it's an obvious situation, go ahead and announce it at the spring. And then that empowers that player to go into the offseason as, hey, I'm the guy, I'm setting the player run practices, I'm the leader now that everybody looks up to. However, this is not the same as quarterback battles were 10 years ago. And this is a, a unique situation where you do have a redshirt freshman who many believe is kind of the future of the program, but then you have a transfer who's come in and the transfer is not a guy who necessarily is coming in to be promised to start, but the transfer has been promised a chance to compete. So our 14 practices and a glorified, glorified scrimmage, uh, is that enough time to say you've allowed, allowed him to compete for the job? I'd probably argue no, unless there's just a huge gap. So I, I think it makes sense for them to be, in this case, a little bit deliberate about just letting it continue to play out and letting them compete. Yeah, and Shane Beamer actually talked about this a little bit too in a previous press conference in that, hey, I, he said, hey, I've been part of staffs that, you know, named a starting quarterback going into spring, leaving spring, ones that have kind of dragged on maybe longer than you would expect it. He, he didn't really say it that way, but competitions that maybe ended up being closer than the outside you know, outside folks would have expected. I mean, the one he mentioned was Kyler Murray. Mm -hmm. Like Kyler Murray, 
went into a season and, I mean, heck, he, he had played the last year for Oklahoma, went into the following year in a battle with Austin Kendall. And most people looked at it and said, well, Kyler Murray will, will be the starter, you know, obviously. But then they went through spring. He wasn't the starter. They got out of spring. He wasn't the starter. And, in fact, they didn't name Kyler Murray as the starter until, like, later in August, you know. And so, now, was part of it that, you know, some posturing, maybe Lincoln Riley wanted it to go on a little bit longer. Maybe the competition probably was closer than maybe the staff or the outside expected. But I, I like your point, Wes. Like, if you're going to say, hey, we're having an open quarterback competition, which is what it should have been going into this year and what it continues to be, you know, are, is that amount of practice time enough? I mean, it, it might not be. Um because we've, as good as we've heard Lenoris has been during the spring, do you need to give it some more time to kind of assess what that gap is and if he's truly the guy? I mean, you, you might need to. I also think there's a benefit, too, especially now that the transfer portals open up. There's a lot of places around the country where, say, you're having a quarterback battle and, and knowing that, hey, one of these guys might leave if he's not thinking he's going to be the starter coming away from spring practice. You have your quarterback room here where everybody's pretty much set in place. You don't think any one of these guys is going to leave next week if they don't get named the starter after the spring game or something like that. Yeah, and I, I thought he had, um, and uh, by the way, Dave, if you want to queue up, cut eight too. That I thought he had some additional really good comments on sellers that I, I think maybe give – give fans a little bit of a window into who he is as a uh, as an athlete and let's hear that uh, now from Dow Loggins yesterday um it's been it's a lot of fun to coach him because he's so positive uh he doesn't have bad days I tell him he's a robot all the time um but it's also one of his best characteristics he's very consistent he has gotten better every day. He learns from his mistakes. I think the best thing about Lenore, outside the talent, all that other stuff, is most of the time, most of the time, um, he doesn't make the same mistake twice. And Coach Parcells used to say, dumb players do dumb things. Smart players seldomly do dumb things. He seldomly does dumb things and takes care of the football. And he's still young. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's a redshirt freshman. Um, got to play a little bit last year, which obviously helped. And it's his second year in the system. But the system won't be the same. You guys know it. I know it. He knows it. It's, we're going to evolve it to fit our players, whether it's Lenore or Robbie or Dante or Luke Doty or Davis, whoever the quarterback is. Um, it's going to change. It won't look the same as it did last year because we built that thing to fit Spencer. And um, now we'll change it to fit whoever the quarterback is this year. But he's been he's been solid. I mean, the kid is very consistent. And without giving away the intricacies and government secrets of practice, that's exactly what you want to hear from your offensive coordinator about the guy that you assumed is going to be the starter. Yeah, I thought that was a, a good sign. And we've seen – that Sellers has those characteristics, but to kind of hear it and that it's been that way throughout all of camp, and he is going to be on a bigger stage now, but to continue to kind of be himself and that uh, like that robot as sort of the, the way to describe it, I, I think makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I, I think for, for Sellers, it's just about continuing to grow within this offense that they're trying to build. Obviously, we're <laughs> we're not going to get a great view of that part of it tomorrow, I think. Dow called it. It's going to be vanilla ice cream, which he likes vanilla ice cream. I do not, but I, I get it. At this point of the year, you you have to present vanilla ice cream. But let me say too, I think Carolina fans would like a little vanilla ice cream during the football season. In that, it's third and two. We're running the football, and we can get four yards, right? Like just at some point, and and that has been that's an element that has been missing at times, you know, in the past couple of few years, just the inconsistencies in the run game. Can you just line up and run the football without being having to be, oh, we're going to be super creative, you mm -hmm. know, and now, you know, as we know, the quarterback room is more mobile as well. That might be it's third and one. Lenore Sellers is, is getting to call his own number. Right. But you, you would like that. Maybe not flashy. Yeah, for sure. But. Well, let's uh, take a look at the defense here from Clayton White as we wrap up today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs up next here on the game.
the game. And the, I think the earlier question was some of the things we get from the spring game is that to go along with your question is like also you get a chance to add depth. You get to see. I mean, you definitely want those guys to go out there and get kind of their preseason game out of the way with the crowd and 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 the, and the spotlight part of it. But you also want to see the young players, the new players, and to see how they perform for the first time. I mean, it'd be a fir our first time seeing them. So it's more of a providing depth is it was the most important thing. I, I think that's the fun part, too. Welcome back in Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Tyler Head, West Metro, Chris Clark with you for a few more minutes. That was Clayton White yesterday talking to the media about, you know, what he was looking for in the upcoming spring game tomorrow night. And on the defensive side of the ball, just like the offense, you're bringing a ton of new guys. And in addition to guys that you have coming back with a ton of experience, especially on the defensive front and at linebacker, we know what we have in guys like Tonka, in guys like Debo Williams, uh, as well as, you know, Brian Thomas. It's the new guys coming in from the transfer portal, guys like Wendell Gregory and J.R. Johnson coming in as true freshmen. Those are the guys that you're really interested in seeing as far as reps tomorrow night and what they're going to be able to bring to the table for this defense yeah and I think we've heard buzz about almost all those guys this this spring and, and this offseason and now the fans get to go see them and uh, you pick Demetrius Knight as your your guy to watch I, I think that's a good one man we've heard a, a lot of great things about really all four new linebackers be it the two transfers or the two freshmen early enrollees I mean if if I was going to pull a Chris and start just naming <laughs> 13 people mm -hmm. i'd throw my man fred jr johnson on the list as well i just i got a i got a gut feeling about that guy i think he's gonna be really good during his time here but um lots of guys i, I thought it was interesting that, and similar to this when dow loggins was asked about the portal window right now He's like, oh, man, we got to get ready for a spring game. We got to get ready for practice. We got to get ready for, well, look at this guy in the portal. Look at that guy in the portal, et cetera, et cetera. And then they asked Clayton White about the portal. And he didn't come out and say it. But my thought when he was asked and the way he answered, I was like, what spot does he need in the portal right now? You know, it's like the, the guys that are going to affect this team defensively are already here. They already went you know, hard in the portal this last window. And now it's just about putting together all the pieces. And so I, I think probably a little vanilla ice cream on defense as well. But um, we will see. Uh, Clayton said exactly 50-50. 3-3-5, 4 5 this spring. I think you, I, I don't know what you call that. See, being a little yeah, just a little, facetious. Yeah, a little, little facetious, I think. I think they'll get yeah. to the end of the game and realize they're like three, uh, three behind <laughs> on like the three, three, five, and it's like, oh crap, we've got to keep up. And make get another season. linebacker out yeah. there. <laughs> you know, a linebacker is so intriguing too because I mean, Shane Beamer talked about it a little bit at the uh, Welcome Home Tour in Lancaster, Tyler, the other night. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and yeah, say no, it. Yeah, you haven't been working on it. I haven't been working on he's it. Looking, I can't, I can't it, do it. I can't. He's do looking it. in the mirror. I can't do it. He's got. He's yeah. Now he's got like a mental block. I was like, no, no, not even trying it. We'll, we'll keep. We'll keep training. But they. I mean, they legitimately. Now you got to get to the season, and it's got to play out this way. I think some people are listening to that. Ah, oh, you know, staff saying there's six or seven or eight deep at linebacker. There's that's there's that's not true. But I mean. You, you could be the most negative person ever and look at it and go, okay, I, I get it, right? Because they have added – you get a couple main guys back. And the guy who was your, probably your best defender down the stretch last year in Bam Scott, I mean, he was really good down the stretch in November. Get Debo back, you bring in two transfers that have played a lot of football. I, I just got a text from uh, Chris Peak at Panther Lair who covers Pitt for Rivals yesterday, and he was asking me about Jules and Kamara. He's like, those guys would have – definitely started this year and they might not, even, might not even start at South Carolina you know they're kind of co-starters very good backup type guys and uh you know Kamara Knight they've done a good job the freshman you still got Jaron Willis out there do you you know what can Mokaba do when he comes back so you start piecing it together and that's I think one reason that they seem to feel better about the front this year well and you know I look at a season ago where it seems like Debo Williams never left the field stone blatant kind of the same way so and yeah prep Howard got out there for a little bit but, but didn't quite pop as much as I think some people thought he was going to in his freshman year so yeah you bring in the experience of Knight Kamara as well as 
hopefully what these two guys coming in as true freshmen can be at that linebacker spot. And they don't have to go out there and be superstars, but if they can come out there and show the potential of being, you know, be able, able to rot in, rotate in and contribute on defense, that's just gravy on top of it. There was something else Clayton White said that I think uh, is important that was a very quick sentence, probably completely overlooked. What he said and the praise he gave to Bam for the job he's done this spring, and he mentioned, hey, guys, he's he's playing all three linebacker spots. He's not just playing that spot that he excelled in last year. And we knew that, we knew that was the case, but I do think there was some question about could he come on to the extent of – like he, he's never been a starter in the 4-2-5 package as well. Right. So the thing that was going to keep him from either being on the field or let him be on the field all the time – was could he also translate his skills to that uh, position as well? So for, for him to say that, I, I think that's a very positive sign that you could see Debo and Bam as your two starters in the 4 2 five. Well, plenty to keep an eye on coming up tomorrow night. Again, we'll have coverage for you of the spring game right here at 7 o'clock immediately following Gamecock Baseball tomorrow afternoon as they take on Arkansas. We'll be back in on Monday to react to everything that we see. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Halftime show coming up next. Myself and Terry Ford here on the game. just checking out the instagram feed for our friends over at integrated media and if you want to go check that out by the way integrated media columbia with an underscore in between those three words they i mean the amount of projects that these guys know how to do is absolutely crazy i was telling you the other day they mounted a tv on a fireplace they've got sonos wireless speakers they even have a sonos record player here they have mounted tvs everywhere they've got improving internet signals for people they have a seven sonos amp set up for speakers so no matter what you need at your home or at your business our guys at integrated media can do it they can make all your audio visual dreams come true again go check them out on facebook or instagram so you can get some inspiration and examples of their past work integratedmediainc.com or give michael and nathan and their entire team a call 803-948-8327 that's integratedmediainc.com